What's up everyone, Colton Furlow here. We are on Coastal Carolina University's campus. I'm an alumni here. I feel very old coming back to my alma mater. It's been a few years since I graduated, but we are here at OK Day on campus. And we're gonna talk to people about what they think the political climate is like here in the United States, especially with this upcoming election here in November. Let's go. Excuse me, sir. We are with the one and only Turning Point organization here on campus. We are in the middle of an election season, right? We're on a very liberal campus. So what do you think like the top issues are uh, among students, like the college age range, especially here at Coastal? Well, I know, um, especially if you're involved in like sports, um, I've kind of done surveys of students on campus before, and um, a lot of them are big on, you know, keep men out of women's sports. Uh, this is something I think that's kind of a unifying issue, uh, really a winning issue for our side as well. Um, yeah, students on campus just, they don't like it. I feel like I should try to join a fraternity. <laughs> Do you think they would accept me? We can find out. Hey guys, I'm thinking about joining Sigma Pi today. Uh, what, what are the requirements to I join? I got a buddy on Sigma Pi. Maybe new Phi chapter? That, this kind of looks like the one for me. We're asking questions more or less about the uh, political environment in America right now. Okay. Do you want to add? Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Okay. So America's pretty divided right now, right? We're in the middle of an election season. Why, why do you think America is so divided over political issues? Well, because I think um, the country is just, it's a lot of issues that's going on that's above my pay grade. But I think that Mine too. The, the issues that's going on is it hasn't been handled well for the past four years. Oh, so a lot of people like are, it. so a lot of people are used to what it was compared to what it is now. Okay. So can I ask you, do you think America is better off about four years ago? Um, you don't have to tell me who you're voting for or anything. I would say the economy, yes. The economy yes. is better? Yes. That man is voting for Trump, for sure. What's your name, though? My name? Yeah. My name's Colton. Colton, I've seen your yeah. YouTube channel. Oh, I appreciate it. When I first started teaching you, I just Googling everything. I'm like, oh, really? oh, I found your channel. <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? That was good. Okay. Even professors know who I am here. I feel special. PJ, how do you think it's going out here, Coastal Carolina's OK Day? I think it's going fantastic. We have a lot of engagement with college students who, in my opinion, are the most mission-minded people um, across the board. And so they're not going to be your biggest givers in church, but they certainly um, are open to conversations and willing to talk about Jesus. And so we're just out here sharing the love of the gospel, inviting them to our uh, community that we have at Langston Baptist and putting a free energy drink in their hand while we're doing it. All right, what are y'all doing right here? What so we're talking about the political climate right now in America. The what? The political climate. Oh, man. Do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> Not, I'm so uneducated, it'd be an ignorant statement. Uh, I can tell you. Can, are, are you going to vote this election? Um, probably. Do you know who you're going to vote for? No. No? No. Why not? What, what are the biggest issues to you that you care about going um, into an election? Oh, man. I... Okay, this is going to answer my question of who I'll, I'll probably vote for. I, d I think as a um, a man who loves Jesus and a disciple of Jesus, I, I just can't get behind voting for someone who would legalize abortion Amen. in America. Amen. So, yeah. I, I think it's pretty right simple. I always say you don't have to, if you're a Christian, you don't have to vote for a Republican. Right. You just can't vote Democrat at this point. You know, the Democrat Party of... The old is not the same now. They're very radical. I mean, we have Planned Parenthood booth down here who is wanting to legalize abortion all the way up to birth and even after birth. Right. And I think it's just satanic. And there's a lot of people who say they're Christians and support abortion as well. Yeah. What do you think about that? I gotta ask. Um, it's, I think it goes along with the, the idea of um, saying you're a Christian and living in unrepentant sin. Um, I think you can take that to a lot of topics, um, whether it be um, sexual sin, partying, drinking, getting high, relying on substances, um, or abortion, um, being okay with being okay with sin and saying you're a Christian don't go together because uh, being a Christian is believing what the Bible says and the, the Bible goes against that. So. Right. This is the time where young people are just so vulnerable to have their minds changed. Absolutely. How, how are you guys? you know, making sure that college students aren't getting sucked into this indoctrination by the radical web. Definitely, yeah. So at Young Americans for Liberty, we're all about liberty-based stuff. Um, we're not 
a guy that's going to be putting in a Republican or putting in a liberal specifically. We're putting in people that value liberty first. Yeah. So that's basically the biggest thing we're fighting for. Um, we got members in Congress, our Hazlitt members, um, great people. Um, we're also doing students' rights campaigns, so we're actually bringing back students' rights on campus. Look who I found. Hey. I found Jessica. You know, I might be a little biased, but this is my favorite booth here. Yeah. Um, sorry, PJ. Sorry, Langston. It's great. But I love the fact that you guys are right across Planned Parenthood. I love it too. What do you think about that? My table was over there. I moved it over here. Oh. I want to be next to them. Yeah. And I went and introduced myself and they seemed fairly nice. It was probably a facade, whatever. I don't want beef. I don't like beef. I just want to share the truth and let people know that on this campus specifically, babies are dying and they're dying in a gruesome way because the director of women and gender studies is also the director of uh, college outreach at Palmetto State Abortion Funds. And they're illegally trafficking abortion pills in from Mexico for all ages for free. Um, and they're telling women that they will serve them up to 18 weeks, which is 12 weeks post legality in this state. And they're telling people to triple bag their baby's body that will be about the size of a banana and either bury it or throw it away. So people don't know everything that's going on. I don't know how to do small talk anymore. I just tell people what I know because the whole world needs to know about this and we're going to shut it down ASAP. She's starting yeah. to preach here. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think about the DNC having Planned Parenthood there? Did you hear about this? Yeah. Planned Parenthood's going to be at the DNC convention. Uh, giving out free abortions, free vasectomies, mm -hmm. and what was it, uh, birth control or uh, Plan B? Yeah, Plan B. W yeah. What's your and take on that? Abortion pill too. Um, my take on that is that I'm not surprised at all. Um, I'm going to use their verbiage. They say women are going to die if we don't have access I was just to abortion. About that. You know, women are going to die if they do have access to abortion because women have already died. Like Tanya Reeves, Cree Irwin, Jennifer Morbelli, Christian Gilbert. There are so many women that have lost their lives because they told abortion was a safe procedure, yet now their children are dead and so are they. Yeah. So when people say that women are going to die and, you know, if they don't have the medical procedures, they can't get the medical help, they're going to die. What is your take on that? Like an ectopic pregnancy, we know that those procedures are not abortions because they are to save the mother's life. Right. And unfortunately, the baby in the pregnancy is just non viable to begin with. So it's yeah. not an abortion. Explain that one. It's very manipulative because they call spontaneous abortions as well um, a necessary abortion uh, care. Like DNC and DNE procedures are also used for miscarriage clean out. But this is taking out the body parts of a deceased child. And a miscarriage is never a woman's fault. And it's crazy to slump that in with um, women who are intentionally trying to kill and dismember their children um, because women are dealing with so much trauma through miscarriages, they didn't choose to lose their life. And to say that that's the same thing as an um, intentional abortion is extremely manipulative, extremely wrong. There is no medical necessity for an abortion. According to the Dublin declarations, which has over a thousand signatures from obstetricians, neonatologists, pediatricians, and midwives, they say that um, abortion is never medically necessary to save a woman's life, but terminating a pregnancy might be. So early c-section emergency delivery is doing your best to save both the woman and the child instead of intentionally targeting the child because there's a difference between not being able not being able to save somebody's life versus intentionally targeting and killing them intent like on purpose gotcha. you know so real quick what does illuminate ccu what do you guys do uh, especially here on campus yeah, we are Coastal's pro-life group, and we do a lot of activism. We also help women individually. Um, we connect them with Coastline Women's Center, which is our local pregnancy resource center, giving them baby clothes, baby formula, housing. Um, my friend's coworker, her rent was just completely and utterly paid for when they found out that she was pregnant. Um, so we give women real resources that they need because women don't want abortion. Um, and we're also planning a baby shower. We met a girl outside of... Um, the Fayetteville Planned Parenthood after sidewalk counseling and she was abortion minded. Now she's choosing life and she's supported and her rent is paid for too. Um, so we do a little bit of that and we also fight back against Planned Parenthood and the dangerous lies of the abortion industry in every way that we possibly can. I love it. I appreciate everything that you do, not only here on campus, but just across the country. Now yeah. I'm gonna go talk to the Planned Parenthood people and see what they have to say. Sure. Okay, let's go. All right, uh, Eden, Trump or Kamala? Kamala. So she's actually the culprit who sent me Kamala Harris stuff and made me gag when I opened it. Trump 2024, make America great, great again. Again, again. Quite frankly, make America great again. Thank you. No side is perfect. Amen. Like, you know, like none of them are perfect. They both still have things that they need to work on. But I just think if you weigh the pros and cons, I personally do not feel safe with Trump running our country. Just well, cause I just don't even think like he likes how, how was it like four years ago? Like we were we were pretty good. We were thriving. Our economy was great. We had basically world peace, no new wars. And now quite 
police officers, like the crime was at its peak, was it not? No, so crime is actually skyrocketing right now under Joe Biden. And it's, it's migrant crime. It's the border being open. We have all these illegal immigrants coming over and that is causing crime to skyrocket as well. And it's also skyrocketing in inner cities with minorities as well. It's because they stopped funding police. Um, they, they, they held back on crime policy. So like in New York City, they went soft on crime. Now you see people getting beat up in the streets. You see elderly ladies just walking down the streets of Manhattan, getting decked, knocked down the subway stairs. Yeah. And that's all because of Democrat policies. But real quick, I know- Trump is like pro gun. Like he's pro like choice for guns. He's, he's pro, you know, second amendment because we have the second amendment, which helps us protect ourselves from the government. I'm not a government person. I don't like the government. I think the government should be limited. I think we should have, you know, laws in place so we don't look like Venezuela, you know, running out of control. Yeah. But it's it's so that we don't have a, a state where the government tries to take over the people mm -hmm. and like like China, Russia, yeah. um, like North that's Korea. That's what he believes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's why that's yeah, why he's for I'm always like open to like learning about more about both sides, because honestly, like I know, like I said, no side is perfect, but it's I just agree. specifically with like my values that I align with, like I'm just not as conservative so i don't like align okay. with like they're more you know that, I mean? that's the line that i love the best yeah. you're you're open and i love that yeah. and i i just want to thank you for having like yeah. a respectable civil conversation yeah, no, no, no. i do hope you change your mind by november but if that doesn't happen i respect your right okay. to vote yeah. and actually going out and voting so thank that's you. what matters to me thank you have thank a good you. one